Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Back by popular demand, my favorite expert on all things political, Claire Lopez is here. She's a former overseas government, well, expert in secret stuff with the CIA. She's back in the United States now. She writes, publishes, and appears everywhere. And she is going to talk to us about what just happened in the election. Welcome back, Claire. Thank you, Barry. Happy to be here with you. So let's let's start off talking about what happened in November and what's been coming to light since then politically. Uh, everybody by now that has access to any real news, uh, that's my qualifier, uh, knows about Dominion uh, machines and Dominion software and the massive amounts of fraud and the thousands of affidavits that have been collected in the swing states that when we went to bed election night, uh, Trump was winning in all of them. And when we woke up on November 4th, uh, miraculously, uh, voting showed up overnight, Dominion machines counted them, and Joe Biden became uh, the leader in all of those states. It's your contention, Claire, as I understand it, that Dominion may actually have some overseas investors? Yes, uh, from, from articles pu published uh, recently, we're, we're speaking here in mid-December 2020. Um, what, is, what is emerging is that uh, there are many, many uh, corporate layers uh, to this Dominion voting systems enterprise. In the beginning, it looks like back in 2006 or so, uh, Dominion was established and, and uh, the software was uh, and the code were, were written um, by Venezuelans in Venezuela for the purpose of making sure that then uh, dictator Hugo Chavez and now more recently his successor, Nicolas Maduro, would forevermore remain in power as long as they lived with uh, Cuban communist assistance. But after that point, uh, Dominion Voting Systems not only spun off a bunch of different uh, software affiliates, um, but also changed hands through a number of different corporate buyers uh, internationally. And most recently, what has caught our attention, and, and yours, Barry, certainly, um, is uh, the October 2019 purchase um, of, uh, I guess it's Dominion Voting Systems um, by a uh, Swiss bank connected, USB uh, bank connected um, affiliate uh, or through or from that bank by affiliates of the Chinese Communist Party. And I know Barry that you know a lot more about this than I do in the details. So tell me if I've got that sort of right anyway. Well, you got that right. It's it. The Swiss bank is UBS, not USB. Sorry, uh, but yeah, <laughs> slip I, there. You you got the rest of it correct. So you know, like we talked about and have talked about, and it's all over the press now. Uh, at least if you know where to look for it, there are thousands of people that have come forward um, signing affidavits under the penalty of perjury, uh, willing to testify in court as to what went on in Nevada, in Arizona in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan. Um, and, and the fraud seems to be not a little bit, but an overwhelming amount of vote changing, um, algorithms that gave Trump three quarters of a vote and gave Biden one and a quarter, or just votes just showing up where there weren't even that many ballots cast. Um, we talked a little bit um, before offline about what might happen in January, Claire. Uh, if there are two sets of elector groups coming out of, well, I think it's seven states so far, um, and they all present their uh, slate. So you've got a Trump slate, a, a group of electors, and a Biden one, say, for Arizona or Georgia or Pennsylvania, um, the Senate and the House could decide to open it up for debate, right? And then what might happen? 
Well, that, that is the system. Um, what happens then uh, under the, the rules, the regulations, the constitution is that each house uh, separates off independently, separately uh, for a couple of hours or perhaps more of debate. Uh, then they come back together uh, and they take a vote, but the vote would be by delegation. That is within the House of Representatives, each delegation uh, has one vote, meaning California has one vote, Wyoming has one vote. In the Senate, each state delegation has two votes. Um, and they decide um, if they accept or reject the presentation of this slate or that slate. Now, in both of those places, in both of those houses of our Congress, um, the Republican Party holds uh, the advantage because of the voting system of one vote per delegation in the House and two per delegation in the Senate. So that could go that way. But I, I wanted to skip back really quickly to how, how we got here. We were talking about Dominion and its software and the programs. What they did, and this is now according to the signed sworn affidavits of many different witnesses at these different legislature hearings we've watched over the last couple of weeks. What they did is the coders who wrote the software for the derivative programs of the Dominion voting systems wrote code that automatically, number one, did what you said, Barry, which is assign a fractional value to what most normal people would think of as one vote, one person, one vote. But no, they split it into fractional sub totals. The other thing that the code did um, was to set um, the, the, the software uh, to a point of rejection of ballots being fed into the, the, the uh, tabulator machines at a very high level of rejection, set it to a rejection level such that 68% or more of ballots in these different battleground areas, particularly six states, would be kicked out for human intervention, human adjudication for which, oh, surprise, there is no kept record. And then the humans put their own uh, uh, vote onto the ballots and fed those back into the machines, sometimes many multiple times. Yeah, and, and what you just talked about is, is shocking. There's a federal law under the Federal Election Commission rules that the amount of deviation uh, that causes adjudication, meaning ballots that are rejected, I think it's something like 0.0008%. If you exceed that, it's a bad election. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like 10,000 times that error rate. It's, it's unprecedented in history. Yeah. And so the question is, in light of all of this evidence, unless you're just going to stand up as a member of the House of Representatives, assuming you're a Democrat, and say, you know what, I don't care how we got there, I want Biden as president, uh, and you sit down, meaning I don't care if it's a truthful, honest, fair election or not, I just don't want Trump. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be that honest. There's going to be all kinds of allegations of these are made up and and those facts aren't true and there's no real proof and yada, yada, yada. Do you predict if you were going to look into your crystal ball, if the Republicans in the House and the Republicans in the Senate have the chutzpah to stand up and say, we protest, we reject these delegations, we want a debate and we want a vote. Will they do it? That is uh, the question. I, I, I wish I had a crystal ball. I don't. Um, but word is that in multiple states now, there are um, uh, representatives and senators, well, perhaps senators, um, who are at least thinking about being that one uh, objection that is necessary in each case of each state's slates. Uh, to stand up and say, I object. 
which then kicks into gear uh, the process we just talked about, the, the separation, the debate, and then the voting. Um, there are, um, certainly in the House of Representatives, Mo Brooks, for one, has been very outspoken that he would be the one necessary there. Uh, and in the Senate, we'll have to see. Um, but this is, this is where uh, the, 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 uh, the process is right now, um, identifying uh, representatives and senators. Remember, we need one from each house to object yeah, I, to a yeah, Senate. In, in the Senate, the, in the, Senate the, the, the word is Ron Johnson's gonna stand up and be that objector. Could be. Uh, and, and he'll be paired with Mo Brooks in the House, and then it's going to be how they vote. And obviously, we know who the president of the Senate is, being the vice president, the current vice mm -hmm. president, Mike Pence. That's going to be a really interesting day on January 6th. And how? Tell people how they can find you. Well, I uh, will one day have a website. But for the moment, um, I post... Uh, obviously these videos at American Truth Project. Um, I also post videos and my written pieces at uh, the United West, at Sharia Crime Stoppers, at the Citizens Commission on National Security, at Brandon House's website, World View Weekend, World View Weekend. Um, I write uh, at my Newsmax blog, um, and then you can find me on social media too, at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter and on Parlay, and at my name uh, on Facebook as well. ATP viewers, find Claire Lopez, read Claire Lopez, watch Claire Lopez, you'll learn a lot. And for those of you that don't know it, Barry has a book out, BYA, because you asked, you can get a free several introductory copies, uh, sorry, chapters of the first copy that's just come out simply by sending the letters B, Y, A, and send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to all of our content and you'll get a link to the new book for ATP Report. Thanks to Claire Lopez. I'm Barry Newsbaum.